Hello. Tell me a joke. There are 10 types of people, those who understand trinary, those who don't, and those who have never heard of it. List items. The list is empty. Add item. Tell me what to add to the list. Get some shopping. Add it get some shopping. List items. Here are your to-dos. Get some shopping. Remove item. Tell me which item to remove. Get some shopping. Remove get some shopping. List items. The list is empty. Tell me a joke. Sympathy for the devil is really just about being nice to QAs. Tell me a joke. A good programmer is someone who always looks both ways before crossing a one-way street. Tell me a joke. A programmer was found dead in the shower. Next to their body was a bottle of shampoo with the instructions lather, rinse and repeat. Tell me a joke. To understand recursion you must first understand recursion. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey robot makers, should we continue our journey building our own AI? So in this session, we're going to add a to-do list to our AI so we can add items, we can delete items, we can get a list of what's currently on our to-do list. So this is an example conversation between me and the robot. So let's head over to Visual Studio and get started. Okay, let's create a new file first of all. So we're going to call this todo.py. So we're going to be using some date functions in there. So I'm going to bring in date time. And I'm also going to bring in something that's called enum. We're going to be creating some unique identifiers. So I'm going to bring in the unique identifier library. And we're going to bring in the version 4 of that. So let's start off by creating an item. So we're going to create a class. Now we always start our classes with a capital letter. So just before we get into creating the class, just to explain what these are if you've not come across classes before. So a class is like a blueprint. So all the objects will inherit everything that the class defines in it, but they'll have their own set of data. So in this example here, we've got a robot class and we have different robots which have different color attributes, red, orange, and green. So we're going to create some items and each item will have its own set of data, but all the functions that they use are common, so they'll be common to the class. So let's start out by creating some of the, the basic things. I'm going to do a double underscore just because this hides the, the data. This is private. So I'm going to call this creation date and let's set that to be the date which we've just brought in and today because we want all the new items to be created today. So change that. Okay, then next we have title. This is going to be the title of the item. So it's going to make that empty to begin with. We're going to have a status. And just before we define what kind of status this is going to be, let's have a look at some of the attributes that we need to include in our class. So in our to-do item, we're going to store an ID, which is unique to this particular item. We could possibly have a URL if it's a web link. We can have a status. We can have a state, whether it's active or not. So creation date, which we've just added. We have the due date when the item is due. We can give it a priority. We can add some notes to this. We've already added the title, which is just a brief description or name. Uh, we can add an icon, and I'm thinking maybe like an emoji, something like that. And finally, a flag, just so we can flag certain items up. We're also going to add some enumerated classes. So things like status and priority. Um, and we might want to add to these later on. So rather than storing the actual text, such as not started, in progress, or completed, we're actually just going to store an integer, such as 0, 1, and 2. And for priority, that's exactly the same. We want to be able to enumerate low to 0, medium to 1, and high to 2. So we'll do that by creating some enumerated classes. OK, so let's just go back up to the beginning of our code here before we complete status and add in a new enumerated class. So we call this class and then status and that's a type enum which is an enumerated class and let's give this not started and do all this in uppercase we're going to have in progress and let's do another one while we're here so we'll have priority as well so now back on our status we can actually add that in as a type so we can say status dot not started and the autocomplete will find that as well, just to make our coding a bit easier. So now we can add in the priority, and that can also be of type priority.low. And let's add some others in as well. So we've got flag, that's going to be a boolean, so that's true or false. We're going to have a URL, which is just going to be a string. We will have a due date, which is going to be a date. And we're also going to have state, which is also a boolean, so that's false to begin with. And finally, notes which again is just going to be a string. So there are all the different items that we have. We might add in icon as well. That was one that we talked about. And that's just going to be a string as well. So we're going to create the constructor. So in Python, that's always double underscore init. And in here, we always have self, which refers back to the class itself. We're going to have a title in this one, 
which is going to be of type string. So this is just a little code hint and we're going to say equals none. So you don't have to provide it, it's optional. So if the title is none, or sorry, is not none, as in we've provided a title, let's actually set the title to the title that's passed in. So that, that title that's been passed in there will actually set this title up here. And then we can say self.id equals, and then let's provide that unique ID, bring that in, and that will create a unique string. So a couple of hexadecimal characters um, that look a bit like garbage to us, but it's unique. Every single time we run this, we'll get a unique number. Okay, so next we're gonna do something interesting. We're gonna create some properties. So properties uh, are what you see when you press the dot uh, on the autocomplete, and you can see all the different things that you can set or get from a particular class. This is what we're gonna create now. So we use a thing called a decorator. So we use the at symbol and we say property. And what we're gonna say now is we're gonna define the property title. So we'll use self because it has to refer back to the particular class we're interested in. And we're going to return whatever is in the self dot double underscore title. So this protects that private piece of data there. We might want to protect that and do some checking on it. We don't just want the user who uses this class to be able to just set title to anything. We might want to do some lowercase, uppercase, that kind of thing to it. In this one, we're actually just passing it straight through, but it does enable us by doing this as a property to protect it somewhat. So we've done one which returns the value of the property. So we could give that um, a bit of help. So we'll do three lots of uh, speech marks and we'll say returns the, oops, returns the title of the item. And we can also just on here do this just to say that this is of type string, oops, like so. And that just helps the compiler, the interpreter to know if we're using it correctly. Okay, so now we've got one part, which is the getter. We need the setter. So we need title, so we need to do at title.setter. This is another decorator. This is the second part of the property. So we can set values. So we give it the exact same title that we've given it before. Use self. Um, but this time we need some kind of value to be passed in because we're going to set whatever is in value. We're going to set the title to that. So self.title equals value. So we've got quite a few of these to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type them all in and I'm going to do this in a time lapse so you don't have to sit here watching me type out all these, but it's the exact same pattern. We're going to have a property which is going to return a value and we're going to have a setter which allows you to set that particular value. So here we go. Okay, so we've now created the item class. We now need to create the actual to-do list, which is gonna house all these to-do items in a list. So we're gonna create um, a private piece of data, which is our to-dos list. So that's going to be list. Let's create the constructor. We'll print out friendly message there. And then we're gonna do current equals one. We'll use this later on, actually minus one. We are now going to create um, a new item. So let's do def new item and the item is going to be of type item which we've just defined up there what we want to do there is a self dot to do's dot append and then the new item that's been passed in it's as simple as that to add an item to our list we want to be able to return the list of items so let's do a new property so this is going to be items and we simply say self and then that's going to be of type list and we return self dot to do's i also like to create a show function just in case we want to do some debugging so um, typically this will just print out a list of things so let's do just to print out some stars. We're going to do 80 stars in a row. So multiplying that star by 80 will just give us a line of it for stars. And then for each item in self.todos, we sort of simply want to print out the item title, the item status, the item priority. You don't need everything on the item.age. Now age is one I created um, a bit further up during that time lapse. And age will simply take away the date, the creation date from today's date. So if we created this today, it'd be zero. If we created this today and we look at this tomorrow, it could be one day old. So we'll get however many days old this particular item is. Okay, that's everything for the show. So then finally we need remove item. So let's do remove item, self. And there's a couple of ways we can either provide the information to remove something from the list. We can either use that unique ID. I'm gonna make it optional by saying it's none. It doesn't have to be there. Or, which is probably the easier way, we're gonna provide the title. So that's gonna be a string and that also can be optional. And we're gonna return a Boolean. So if the title is none and the UUID is none, meaning we've not given any information 
to actually be able to remove this, we need to print a message that says you need to provide some details for me to remove it. Either UUID or title. If UUID is none and title is true, as in we have a title, then for item in self.todos, let's check each one. If item.title equals the title that we passed in, then self dot to do's remove and then we can return true to say that that's worked successfully if it falls through to this piece of code it means that the item title was not found so we can return false if we just provided the uid we can actually just remove it straight off okay so let's test this out shall we let's say i equals item and it's going to be we're going to just pass in a, a value such as get the shopping and we're going to do L equals to do. It's going to be our to do list and then L dot new item. And then we add in the item I that we've just created there. So we now do L dot show. Let's run this. We can see there that the new list has been created and it says get shopping. Status is not started. Priority is low and the creation of sorry, the age is zero. We've not We've not given it any age yet because it's still today. Okay, let's try adding to this, removing the item. So if we do L dot remove item and we pass it the title, which is get shopping. And then we do L dot show. Let's try that. So we can see to begin with, we have the item, which is get shopping. And then as we remove it, there's nothing after that. I've just spotted a typo as well, which is just here. That should actually say remove. Oops. Now there's something else that we need to add to this class to make it iterable. Uh, and what I mean by that is we want to be able to expose all the different items that are on the list one at a time uh, so that we can we can use things like the for loop. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to include a couple of extra special functions in the class. So I'm going to go back up to the top here and just underneath in it I'm going to add in a couple of extra things. So we're going to add in the double underscore iter and that's simply just going to return self. Next up we're going to have another one which is next. So this will get the next item off the list. So it's a little bit more involved this one. So we're going to say if cell current, remember we set current to minus one. So if this is less than the length, which is another way of saying how many items are in the to do's list. So if the, the current number, which is minus one is less than the length, which means the, the total number of items in our list. So currently we have one item in our list minus one. That will mean that we have zero items. So if minus one is less than zero it is then we want to drop into this so we say self dot current plus equals one which adds one to whatever current is then we just want to print out just to make this easier to understand self dot to do's and then we're going to use this self dot current as an index into that list and then we're simply going to return that as well otherwise what we want to do is make self dot current equal to minus one so we're resetting it back to the beginning so we need a raise stop iteration which tells the interpreter that there's no more items in the list and to stop there and then finally i want to have another one which is how many items are in the list and the convention for doing that is length so if we if we do double underscore length double underscore and then we simply just return kind of pass through the length of the to do's and that's it so now over in our alf.py which is the the ai main script i've added a couple of extra functions so i've added an add to do which is returns a true or false so first of all we need to bring in the items and the to do lists from our new class so we from to do import to do an item and then we say item equals items we're just going to create a blank item there and then we say alf dot say tell me what you want to add to the list and then we just do a try accept and this just catches any errors so try item dot title equals alf dot listen so whatever alf listen returns which is what the text that we've spoken to it returns into the item dot title we then do to do dot add new item item so we're going to add in whatever is now stored in item and then we're going to say message equals added and then the name of the, the new item and then we just get alf to save that message back and then we return true because it's worked successfully otherwise if, they ha if there was some kind of error we tried to run this there was a bug of something some kind and we can just say oops there was an error and return false so that's the first one to add items next up is how to list the to do's so and this is where we use that length function that we've just created so we say if length to do is greater than zero as in there is more than one item on the list then we say alf dot say here is your to do's and then for each item in the to do which is what that iteration function was all about we say alf dot say item dot title so it'll go through that items in the to do list and it'll say each one of them if there's nothing in the list so if we drop down to this else we say the list is empty and then finally we have remove to do uh, 
this is also going to return a true or false. So alf.say tell me what you want to remove and then we, we try accept again so item.title equals alf.listen and then we try and remove the item using the title match so title equals the item title so the text needs to be exactly the same uh, and then we say message equals removed and then the item title and then we get alf to say what that is removed shopping or whatever the item is then we return true otherwise if there's an error again we say oops there is an error and we return false so now in our main loop we need to add in a couple of extra commands so one of the things i've also done is i've got to try accept um, loop in here as well which wasn't there previously and again this just captures any errors that could occur and means that our code runs a bit smoother i also set the command to lowercase so if we're completely dealing in lowercase it means we don't have to worry about uppercase lowercase mix of characters so then we say there's the tell me a joke one now what i'm doing now is i'm saying if the command is in this list so it's add to do add to do or add item so any of those phrases run our add to do function up at the top uh, and then we also set the command back to nothing after we've run that if we say if the command is in list to do's a list to do list to do list to do list to do's or list items then run the list to do's otherwise we have the one that says remove to do remove item mark done remove to do's remove to do's and so on so that will run so let's give this a go now one of the things i've also done just for clarity i wanted to change the voice so on the, on a mac you have lots of different voices that you can run i go to spoken and we have lots of different voices. hello my name is ava so is i am ava. an american english voice daniel is what i've been used to using on hello the mac. my name is daniel i am a british english voice british english voice hello my name is kate i am a british english voice these are all British English ones. Hello, my name is Oliver. I am a British English voice. We have Serena. Hello, my name is Serena. I am a British English voice. We have the Siri voice. Hello, I'm Siri. And then Ava. That's the one I've chosen. I quite like the sound of Ava. Hello, my name. So that's what I've gone for. Now, what I've done is I've added in the uh, AI class there, I've just said uh, voice equals self dot engine get properties voices and then i say set the engine set property voice and voice number five ava is the fifth voice and that just means that we can set that voice in there so this won't work on the raspberry pi uh, but it will work on a map okay so if we go back to alf now and we click run hello list items the list is empty add item tell me what to add to the list sausages added sausages list items here are your to do's sausages remove item tell me which item to remove Sausages. Remove sausages. List items. The list is empty. Tell me a joke. Finding a good PHP developer is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Or is it a hack stack in a needle? Okay, and that's it. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. We've just added an extra skill to our AI. We'll add some extra ones in the future. Maybe a weather one. Uh, we can also add to this a web UE as well, web user interface. Uh, it's a little bit more involved and we might have to rework some of the classes that we've just created there so that it can store things long term. Because currently as soon as this uh, has ended, then it no longer works. In fact, I need to say goodbye. Goodbye. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you next time.